Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's story time again tonight. Why does a 40-year-old man play video games? Hello, my name is Stratus. Thank you for tuning in. We have story time tonight. We're going to go over why I still play video games at such an advanced age. Right? Uh, if you're tuned in, please make sure that you uh, check the links down below. I have links to my Twitter and my Twitch for more content if you're interested. Also, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. That helps out a lot. So let's get started with this story. And I'm trying to think what age I was. To tell you the truth, I don't know how old I was. It was early 80s, right? <laughs> and uh, we actually, my, my, I don't know how my mom and dad pulled it off, but we did have the Atari 2600, right? with the uh, horrible Pac-Man port and Space Invaders. And those are really the only two games you needed. Quite honestly, you didn't need anything else. Uh, just played the dickens out of that on a little tiny uh, black and white television screen because we didn't really have a color television screen. But uh, still, it, it was amazing. I, it was like the best thing I'd ever seen. Cause you know, you who go to the arcade and use quarters, but when you don't have much money, it's kind of nice being able to play video games for as long as you want, as much as you want. Even though the Pac-Man port, you know, technically wasn't all that great, but the Space Invaders, just, it, it was amazing. I, I loved it. Played that, played that system forever. Um, and then full disclosure here, I'm gonna be talking about some Nintendo games here. I never really had my own Nintendo NES system, right, my cousins. And my aunt had the Nintendo NES system, but I played a lot of Nintendo. So anytime I was over there, we played a lot, right? And so that's kind of next on the list. I'm trying to think. Want to say sixth, my sixth grade year, just about somewhere around then. We finally got the NES, right? My aunt did, aunt and my cousins, and uh, it was still a late after the release nintendo had been out for a while i can't even remember how long it would have been out for already but we got it mario brothers it's awesome you go through and you know eventually you learn how to beat it and then you just challenge yourself like oh we're not gonna turbo top or beetle top right we're just gonna try to go through there straight or we're gonna try to do it without warps they're just all the stuff but really what just the games you just played the heck out of it's Zelda and Adventures of Link Zelda 2, right? Those are the two games that the NES had that just blew me away. I, I, uh, the first Zelda, I never beat that, right? I played it here and there. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's super open world and like no structure whatsoever, right? You just, you can, you, I think you could just go straight to the last dungeon if you want, as long as you have the items to get there. But, I don't know if anybody's ever beat it that way. Maybe it's technically possible. Who knows? But all I know is unheard of at the time. It's just an amazing game. And then uh, Adventures of Link, you know, it they had a little different vibe with Adventures of Link, right? It was side scrolling when you were doing your combat. Then you had like top down as you were like navigating the world. And uh, kind of Final Fantasy VII really took that idea where you like get pulled into battle and you have a different look of the screen uh zelda 2 even way back then that's how they made that work so uh yeah that was an amazing game i never beat that either we got to the very last castle right and those there's these little if you've ever played it or if you ever decide to play it you'll, you'll know what i'm talking about it's the little bird guys that just do all the things right they could jump and they can point down and they can point up and they can fire the swords that uh shoot forward it's just extremely difficult and a, a very young Dravit just couldn't beat that game i tried i did i really tried and I, I couldn't get past that um after that uh there's really not much to say uh things in my life changed kind of at that point in time uh, money got really really tight and no consoles none at all zero consoles throughout uh you know most of my high school years essentially right so 
all through high school. Uh, when I got out of high school, I wasn't really interested in video games anymore, right? It just wasn't big on my agenda. I had other things I wanted to do at that time, other things I wanted to spend money on, and I did. Uh, lots of money and other things. So that, that I just didn't really do much of video gaming. Um, whenever I finally did start getting into the video gaming again, again, I, uh, it was my cousin had a PlayStation and he really liked these games on there. So it's like, hey, let's play some PlayStation games. I remember uh, Parasite Eve when that came out. Uh, I think we went in halvesies on that game, but we went over to, you know, we were in his room playing the uh, PlayStation 1 Parasite Eve. That was an amazing game, and it kind of turned me on to video games again. And uh, I remember one of our friends was like, oh, you have to try this Final Fantasy 7 game, right? So we're like, okay, yeah, we'll try it. He lent us the, the game, and it comes in like, it had like, I think it had four discs in the thing, but only three discs were part of the game. I can't really remember, but uh, you start out with disc one, and then it tells you when you put in disc two, and then it tells you when to put in disc three. And the game was huge. It was amazing, and I love the material materia system. I uh, there's just so much to do. You have the airplane you, that floats in the water. Then you have the uh, airship. Uh, you have the submarine. You have all the mini games. Uh, there's the chocobos, the chocobo races. Uh, I, I, I know I'm missing stuff here, but then like you have the weapons. You have like the Ultima weapon, the Emerald uh, weapon, which I did beat both of those. I never did beat the Ruby weapon. I, that one was just too much for me. I, I never did figure that out. Um, but uh there's just so much to that game. It is insane. You have the bike mini game. You have the snowboarding mini game. You've got just all the things that they packed into that game at the time. I still think it's the best game of all time. I haven't played the remake. I probably won't. Uh, when it comes out on PC, I'm, I might give it a shot. But it all depends because it's already been seen and shown. And it looks like the same game, just better right just high res and i don't want to uh i just have so many fond memories of that i'm just gonna leave those there right i don't want to mess with that um and then you know right off the heels of that you had like parasite eve 2 and then you have like final fantasy 8 those were my next two big games at this point i'm hooked right i am all in this is what i'm going to do i'm gonna i'm gonna go back in and i'm gonna play video games again and at the time, console was still really all I was interested in and all I was doing. Um, but there was Final Fantasy IX on there too, and that one was like, eh. I, I mean, it, it's Final Fantasy. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. But uh, I did actually decide to buy the console, the PlayStation 2. And uh, when that came out, the, the game I started out with was Summoner which is a highly underrated game. That's an amazing game. Uh, I don't think it holds up very well. I played a computer port of it. It's not all that great. But at the time, I, I just couldn't get enough of that game. Uh, I also played uh, Summoner 2 and uh, Final Fantasy X came out on the PlayStation 2. That was a huge one and that one was amazing. Oh my goodness. So. Uh, that that was worth the console right there, just being able to play Final Fantasy X. Um, trying to think, I haven't quite gone to computers yet, right? Uh, I was still had the PlayStation Two, but I had to get the hard drive because Final Fantasy XI came out, and you could get a hard drive plug-in for your PS Two so that you could play uh, Final Fantasy XI, and that's really what got me hooked on the whole MMO thing. The whole idea. And I still think Final Fantasy XI did the best you could with skills and the way that you skill up because you have to buy a particular scroll or a script to kind of learn a particular you know, skill or spell. But then the more often you use it, that's how you level it up. So you could kind of grind that out 
in order to get it leveled up to a higher and higher level and make it more useful. And I really like that idea. And I kind of, you know, World of Warcraft kind of had that whenever it first came out with like the uh, weapons level up and the defense level ups. And I, I just kind of wish more games would go that way. I know EVE Online has something that was kind of similar where you could like essentially sign up for a course and then just spend time. And the more time you spend, eventually you learn skills that way at higher and higher levels. Uh, kind of, I kind of like that idea in an MMORPG of leveling up your skills and becoming, you know, building your character more in that way. Um, but, you know, the last game that I do remember playing on the console was the Final Fantasy XI, right? The, the big game. I'm, I'm just talking about the highlights here. I've played so many games, but I, I'm, go I'm going over all of the highlights here. So amazing, amazing game. And that kind of really turned me on to, uh, I did, had another change in my life uh, where I had to take a little time where I had no technology available to me. But whenever I came back and technology was available again, I got a computer. And on that computer, uh, I'd heard about this World of Warcraft thing. I put the World of Warcraft on that computer, and oh my goodness, I'm still playing this game to this day, right? Of course, I've taken breaks here and there, but let's just kind of go ahead and... Uh, it was kind of at the... It was 2005, at the end of 2005, so I don't know all the expansions and when they came out. But uh, So I was late coming to Classic, essentially, right? But I still... My very first character was my druid. He's still available. It's uh, Drab it on a comic. Anybody could check it out. See, uh, check him out there. Uh, it was a horde character at the time. Uh, we'll go through the whole history here. So. But I played him and didn't quite get him. You know, throughout all of this, there's life changes and we all have to deal with life and what happens there. But, uh, Got him to a certain point and I kind of got bored with the game for a while and I had other things going up on with my life right I was ending a certain point in my career and I was starting school and trying to get my education and trying to work and do school and do video games a lot of it was very difficult uh, I did wind up getting uh, the Burning Crusade I want to say that was in 2007 so still late coming to the Burning Crusade but I did level up a character finally all the way to 70 in uh, the Burning Crusade, but that was kind of right when Wrath of the Lich King was starting to come out. Didn't have the money yet, uh, so I was late coming to Wrath of the Lich King, but uh, that's really where I started to really get involved with World of Warcraft. I, all of it, it was just kind of dabbling and exploring and just kind of liking the idea of having this huge diverse world and all the professions you can do and just kind of just getting the feels. Uh, and there's something I could do on my spare time where I could just go in and veg out and just grind away, right? It, it was just essentially a, a, a Skinner box in some senses, but in, a, in an enjoyable way. But Wrath of the Lich King, I, I got my first character all the way up to, uh, what was it, 80 at the time? And then I had uh, the not far behind, because at the time my hunter was my main, but my druid and my warrior soon got all the way up there as well and I used those three, three just to grind battlegrounds I just all of them had the perps right <laughs> I just did beat I love battlegrounds so much I just ground BGs over and over and over again I, I dabbled in a couple of raids here and there uh what was the I think it was Trial of Crusader just trying to get the weapon drop from Trial of the Crusader and then a little bit of Nax here and there because I was a hunter so I think Nax was the only one I did and they needed a hunter they're like hey can you like drop traps and kite these zombies around it's like yeah man I play pvp all the time I'm made for that let's go I didn't really have I had pvp gear at the time but it was good enough all I had to do was kite the zombies around so it was great had a blast doing that but uh what was as the dog boss and the construct wing next famous i think it was wrath of the lich king it was like the height pinnacle and at this time uh it's just before cataclysm is going to come out it's the first time i'm so excited 
I'm going to be able to start an expansion right at launch with my character, get in, bust through. And I did. I, I got into Cataclysm. I, I got the flying. I, I went through all the worlds and I had a great time. I was doing the dungeons were great. I thought the dungeons were awesome, right? So I had a good time in Cataclysm. I wasn't really raiding yet though, right? And I got bored really quick. I leveled like just so many characters to cap and it's like, it, it just, I, it was kind of lackluster. I, I couldn't really build my character anymore. I couldn't like switch my, it, it was, I, I don't know how to explain it. Cataclysm just fell flat for me about, I don't know, a year in. <laughs> I, I was like done. It's like, I need a break can't do this anymore i i honestly uh was not going to come back for pandaria so right about that time swartor was coming out and i was already you know as cataclysm went away i was playing eve online a lot right got into eve online playing that but it's it was kind of grinding it's spreadsheets in space there's a lot of really good things about it but uh there's still some parts about it where i feel it wasn't so great because uh, I'm the spaceship thing is cool, but I prefer kind of like the just sword and board type stuff. Right? I, I prefer more of the classic D and D type idea, even though Warcraft's not that. You know, just kind of that idea of the fantasy side of things instead of the science fantasy type of. Thing. Uh, and at that same time, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic Online, the online game, was coming out. So uh, one of my buddies was getting ready to play that. So he and I got in there and, uh, you know, we subbed and we we did our thing. We got through, you know, capped our characters. Uh, but it, were, it, it got boring fast. We'll just say that. I know they have other expansions and stuff, but... It was kind of really easy. We'll, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. This game was pretty easy. There were a couple of cool things like out in the open world where we're, there were these really strong mobs. I don't think that's the case anymore at all, but there there was a there were some interesting cool ideas there. The one thing that turns me off the most about this game though, the, the Star Wars The Old Republic, is it's all pictures and smokes and mirror, smoke and mirrors, right? And this is gonna be a theme. You'll, you'll notice this with a lot of these MMO games and their weaknesses compared to World of Warcraft. And the thing that I like the most about that is when you get in to any any part of the world in World of Warcraft, you could look at something and you're like, let's go there. And you can like go there. <laughs> uh, eventually, if you can fly, you could fly to the top of there, right? But I just remember the first time I went to the Barrens and I was able to like, you know, find a way up to the top of a mountain uh, in the Barrens. And you're like, wow, you can, you can go to these places here. In Star Wars The Old Republic, when you're in the water, you can't go under the water. There's, there's no place to go under the water. Uh, if you're in the city, that city's not actually there. I can see there's a whole city out there, but I can't go to it. Right? They, they, they really, it's all smoke and mirrors, essentially. Kind of the same thing with Final Fantasy XIV. The game, the, the structure, the character building, all of that stuff seems so perfect and exactly what I want in an MMO. Right? Just my main, the way I want my character to be. Just, right, so my character, let's make that clear. When I get into the world, and I have to, first off, hit all of these loading screens. Um, it's not that awful, but it's it kind of in World of Warcraft. I don't have a loading screen, right? If there's ever any little trouble, I just have a little wheel at the top that says, "Hey, stuff loading." But you you don't notice any problems nowadays. You used to have some trouble back in the day, but nowadays you have zero issue. But in Final Fantasy, it's always you're loading another instance. You're loading another instance. It's not truly open world. And uh, the first time I got to like the ocean, and I'm thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna fish," you know. I, or, or something, I go to the dock and I'm gonna like, hey, let me jump in the water. There's an invisible, you know, there's a wall there. It's invisible. I can't jump into the water. I can't go swimming. I can't explore down underneath the uh, water. It's all just a pretty picture and it's fake and it's not real, right? It's, uh, 
this artificial world that they're presenting to me in that case. So everything I like about building my character, progressing my character and all of that, Final Fantasy uh, 14 has, but it's it, the, the, the world just doesn't jive with me. And they, they really don't have a PVP element. Um, which Star Wars The Old Republic, I do have to give them a very strong honorable mention for Hutball. <laughs> like the greatest PvP ever created is is Hutball. All right. Uh, hopefully, WoW could steal that. They steal everything. I wish they would. That's just an amazing uh, PvP experience. I don't know if it's still as good now as it used to be, but that was awesome. I love me some Hutball. All right. Uh, lo and behold, though, uh, Mr. Pandaria has been out for a little while, and uh, I decide I have to go back and try out this well. So I go ahead, I, I, I sign up, I start playing Mr. Pandaria. This is before they made a lot of changes, and when I got to the end, there were like world quests upon world quests upon world quests. I think I, I quit after the first month. I, I really did. Um, but then uh, when I heard uh, the Thunder King Island was coming out, I decided I was going to come back for that, which was amazing. It's good to come back, even though that was still World Quest upon World Quest upon World Quest. It kind of built on itself. And it, as you were doing these World Quests, you, you progressed deeper within the island. And it had a great PvP system that was just absolutely amazing that was built in to that uh still wasn't reading yet at that point uh whenever i first started raiding was in mr pandaria like regularly and I, I was the lfr king right i i didn't see any point in doing anything harder let's just do lfr get in get out get our loot uh and i didn't start doing that until oh I, was it the last raid the last raid in Nessa Pandaria, I was like, let's do this. It was Siege, uh, that was right, Siege of Obermar. Got in there, and that was the, the very first time I really started raiding. Uh, and then I decided, you know what, we're gonna, I was able to go back and do some of the older raids because you had to like level up your cloak. So I decided I wanted the legendary cloak at that point. And all, all things lead to other things, and eventually got the legendary cloak on a couple of characters and uh, had a really good time. And ever since then, ever since Miss Pandaria, and you know, they had so many other things like the Isle of Giants and the Timeless Isle, which was amazing. Uh, that's another reason I had to get the cloaks. I could do the raid for the uh, Timeless Isle. So it's just, everything just built on itself in that particular expansion. There's a really, really good one. And I, I got to Warlords of Draenor and I did the garrison thing and I stayed in that expansion for a really, really long time. Um, Still just doing the LFR thing all throughout Warlords of Draenor. And at the time, uh, I think I was out of college now, right? So I was starting a new job and didn't really feel like I wanted to invest all of that time in, uh, into the game yet. Uh, but then Legion came out. And this is the time when I finally decided we're gonna do it. We're gonna start paying. So you, you know, start networking, get some friends, get into a guild. In my particular guild, we get a raid team, right? And uh, there's no looking back, right? That it's kind of this camaraderie that you have. And even though I, I, I I've had to take breaks here and there. I come back, they always welcome me back. Uh, I'm sure we're going to raid again. And, and and there's so many teams that we all kind of interact with each other that no matter what, I'm going to have a slot on some raid team somewhere. So it, in the end, it feels really good. Just, I, I like raiding so much. I, I used to just PvP all the time. I'm kind of going the other way now where I spend more time raiding than I do PvP. And I always have this conflict when I'm trying, especially with the upcoming expansion, trying to decide where I want to put my resources into or what I want to concentrate on or what talents I need to pick. I'm having a, a difficult time deciding 
you know, how I want to build my character here. Uh, in the end, it's probably going to be leaning more towards rating because I can always, you know, press my buttons better than other people in the BG and not have to worry about it. Now for arena, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to work as well. I don't do much arena anyways. I only do like required arena things to hit certain, get certain things if I need them, but I'm not going to, I don't rank very high in arena at all. Most of the time it's raid and BGs, right? So, uh, that is how the 40 year old man winds up still playing video games. I know this has been long and drawn out and, uh, I still have good like work-life balance and as you can tell there's a lot of times where I had to be like I ah, can't do video games right now I have other things to do in my life but uh that that's how this happens thanks for watching thanks for tuning in I hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure that you like comment and subscribe again you can check links down below for more content on twitch and twitter but uh other than that make sure you turn on war mode <laughs>